Miss Zhang Xingfang, Zhang Laoshi. She's the owner of an independent bookstore, an art teacher, and a heritage conservation practitioner. The topic of her presentation today is a journey from art courses to cultural heritage. Please welcome Ms. Chang. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming today on 1st April. I'm Zhang Xinfang, and now I'm a bookshop keeper and also an art class teacher in an elementary school. And this is one of my favorite corner of the bookshop where I co-manage with my friend since uh, 2017 and where the interesting course idea occurred I'm going to talk about today. Okay, in this picture, the skyline was dominated by smoking factory chimneys. This is my hometown, Chaotou, a small village in Huatan, a rural township south of Zhanghua City in the middle of Taiwan. Each 45 meters tall chimney represents a brick kiln, and one of them belongs to my family right in the lower corner. Here, the Hoffman Brick Kitten. I was born, grew up, and live surrounded by different types of brick kitten. However, I never realized how significant it is until I entered the Graduate Institute of Architecture and Cultural Heritage in TNUA. And that is the Brick Kitten who bring me to get linked to cultural heritage. Let's see from another side. Huatan is specialized in roof tile and brick production due to plant, plentiful supplies of high quality clay. And the industry continued from 1906 until now, over 110 years without interruption. And here are the high quality clay brick bath in the sun. So here, here are the clay bricks. And in 1999, the earthquake um, on 21st September hit Taiwan's land as well as the brick industry. Since then, I began to assist my family's brick business to transform into an educational factory. And gradually, I found out some possibility in traditional industry. Then develop the minimized brick and open the tunnel kiln to the public step by step. So in this picture, the character chun are made of uh, mini bricks. And the, 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 the next picture is the tunnel kiln that uh, is already open to the public now. The oil painting is named Dan Shui Landscape, Taiwanese artist Chen Chen Po's famous work, which was registered as an significant antiquities in 2015, and now collected by National Taiwan Museum of Fine Art. And this oil painting opens the door for us. In 2018, I had an opportunity to design a series of cultural co courses under this painting, the theme of Dan Shui landscape. And words by local artists often reflect Taiwan's cultural landscapes. So we decided to introduce this work through 
three topics from the artist's life story, the map of artist's work, to the traditional building's features in the painting. In the activity, we, in the activity we can see from the left, uh, from the right picture, we invited the participant to feel with the, uh, their five senses. The kids closed their eyes while parents handing them and walking into the showroom. Then use their hand to touch the relief sculpture work of Dan Sui landscape to feel the shape. Imagine what objects are there. And in the process, I received many interesting answers such as ships, cars, etc. before they opened the eyes. And for the workshop, we prepare the real materials like different types of roof tiles and breeze with relative knowledge to help the participants get to know more about the traditional buildings. And here are their uh, creations. Creations, we use the clay to make eaves tiles, watang, and the mini bricks to build brick walls and the brick houses that uh, relative to the painting. So this was our first step. Since then, the cultural heritage art course began to take shape. And with the passing uh, experiences, we decided eight art courses under the theme of the art of Taiwan temple decorations and gave lessons in the formal education in 2020. This is a trend transdisciplinary art course based on knowledge, history, culture, and aesthetic content for third to sixth grade students. Every week, the student learn one classical decoration art of temple and experience the handcraft approaches, then accomplished one decorative work, include past decoration of temple like the, the uh, picture shows on the screen. And the uh, Koji pottery, Zhao Zitao, then Men Shen, Do God painting. So in the past decoration of temple course, we use paper clay and color paper to practice cut and paste, then imitate to make one decoration as flower or fish. And now we can see how the girl make a flower from the video. He cut the flower petals first and insert it into the clay in order, step by step. So then he finished his work. And we also find the fruit decorate decoration on the rooftop of temple. So in the Koji pottery course, I set the fruit topic to make the student create three to five kind of fruit with colored clay. I know that their favorite activity. At four Munson course, I encourage the student to copy a master's Munson painting to learn from the masterpieces and we can see their cute work in the picture. Here, their works. Finally, every student built a temple from scratch, uh, actually from a piece of paper board decorated with their every little work and what more, they have to put them at the right, correct place, as the picture shows above. At the end of the course, we arrange a cultural experience route in Luga, the historic district, to instruct the kids to verify what they had learned in a real temple and to immerse in cultural heritage. My co-worker teaches social study in elementary school. 
And the fourth grade social study textbook talks about the concept of my hometown. That inspired her to plan an extended learning on local community Douliu. And the Douliu Men is the old place name. This is a plan about local history, writing, book, and bookmaking. We'd like to make the student know all their notes related to the Douliu Men could be writing materials that forms a book. When it comes to the history of book, movable type printing plays an influential role in spreading culture. We are lucky that the last traditional Chinese correct letter place exists in Taiwan, in Taipei. So I have the access to buy some movable metal type to teach them how to tell the movable type printing from modern printing, just like in this picture, in the middle picture. Yeah, here. This is the traditional printing and this is modern printing. Okay, the student all feel surprised and excited while touching, smelling, feeling the movable metal, metal types of, from Rixin type foundry. At last, the student handmade traditional binding books with drawing and writing from cover to inner content and to complete a storybook, their own book. With school teaching practice, we realize mobile learning is a necessary change in the way of teaching. So we designed a case with which could meet a teacher's need while teaching on the scene. The equipment has two parts, a wooden case and a base, so that they can get assembled into a portable wooden table with an adjustable compartment and it provides users an easy way to storage tools, objects, and even books. Cultural heritage is in our life. In these years, we try to make cultural heritage get closer to the young generation. Last month, a sixth grade girl asked me, teacher, is the Rixin type foundry far away from Taipei Railway Station? I said, no, it's near the Taipei Railway Station. And on the next week, she walked to me and said happily, my grandmother lives in Taipei. She promised to, to take me to Rixin Taipei Foundry. I was glad to hear that. It seems that the cultural heritage is coming to the young girl's life. And this is my presentation. Thank you for your listening. Thank you.